Wizard of Oz cake. So if you watch these lives regularly, you'll know that this isn't something I do a lot. Um, I don't typically do themed cakes, but I'm very excited for this one. I'm just bringing up the chat on my iPad so that I can see anyone's comments. Um, it's currently loading. So, thank you. Um, so yeah, it's a Wizard of Oz cake. It's green and it's got a black drip. I've already made the fondant pieces just because they took a little while because I don't typically do fondant and I also wanted them to go hard before I put them on the cake or like not hard but like set um, so that I could pick them up and not damage them at all. So we've got a witch hat, then we've got two legs. Um, I made two little shoes which I'm so not used to doing all of this so I'm actually a little bit impressed with myself and I also made some lips. Um, so yeah it's the cake is kind of like the body and the head um it's a design that she sent me i'm not sure whose it is because it was kind of cropped out but it's someone else's like cake design um but yeah it's the main part of the cake is kind of like the body and then you put the lips on the side and it's got the hat out the top and then the legs coming out the side as well i'm doing a covered board the board it needs to be black so what we're going to do is when this goes in the fridge once i've done the final coat on it of the green which is here you would have seen in the thumbnail so once i've done that we're going to cover the board with fondant so i'll show you how to do that it's a black covered board so it's going to also be stamped so i'm going to be using my little stamps to imprint a little message that they've asked to put in it so yeah we're going to be doing that as well in this video um what else yeah, so it's got a black drip, so we're going to be doing a dark chocolate drip, and then I'm going to be adding my colour mill to it to make it black, and I think that's everything. Um, there's no, like, cake topper, it's all being printed on the board because it's quite a long message. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get right into it, I'm going to get the cake out of the fridge now that there's quite a few people on here. So it's a four inch cake, and we're going to start with the final coat. So, let's get it out of the fridge. So it's been in there for a few hours because I like to leave my crumb coat to set quite a lot. Some people will do it immediately, but with four inch cakes, because they're so wobbly, you definitely need to have it in the fridge for plenty of time. So yeah, this is the cake. It's a double chocolate cake. So it's got alternating layers of white chocolate, buttercream, and then um, milk chocolate. So it's got alternating layers like that, and then the final coat is a mixture of the two, so that's why it's like brown and white, but this is just a crumb coat. And yeah, it's about seven inches tall. Usually people ask how tall my cakes are. They're four layers and roughly seven or eight inches tall. Um, and this isn't the final board because it's going on a covered board. You do it on just a plate or any kind of board that you have, and then we'll be transferring that using the upside down method and we do that before we put the drip on. So that is kind of the process that we're going through today. Um, hello Harry, I just watched your renovation video, absolutely loved it. Oh, I'm glad, that's my new office and bedroom. So I did a little renovation, so if you haven't watched that, then definitely go and watch that after this. So I'm gonna pan you down so that you can see the cake, obviously. There we go. So I've got my piping bag here and where are my scissors so i'm just gonna cut a hole in the end i'm not using a nozzle or anything just because you don't need one for this step and then we're just going to pipe this around so and because it's a witch themed cake the green is like a luminous green which i absolutely love it's nice when you do cakes which are just completely different to your normal and I quite like to get into themed cakes because then it means that I can cater for more people. Um, the upside down method, wow, I could never, it would just fall off and onto the floor. So what you do is you put a board on the top and then you hold the one on the bottom and you flip it over and then you put the right board on to, back onto the bottom of the cake whilst it's upside down and then you just flip it back over and then it's on the right board. That's literally all you do. So that's what I'll be doing once the one, the other board is covered in fondant. We'll be flipping it over so that we can then put it onto the new board. So 
So for anyone that's new here, you just put your questions into the chat and then we'll answer them throughout. There will be some fridge time where we'll have a little bit more downtime to answer questions. So I'll let you know when that is. But if you ask them throughout, I'll try and answer them as best I can. So I'm just filling in any gaps. Um, did you advertise your Etsy page before starting or did your Etsy naturally grow? Um, Etsy's really difficult um, in terms of like getting seen. I literally posted about it a few times um, for Halloween and then after I did all my Halloween orders, I didn't have any for like a month and then in January they just went a bit crazy and people started finding me on there. It's gone to a bit of a lull at the moment, which I understand is the same with most postals because I've like spoken to other bakers. And I think it's just a case of like, we're coming out of lockdown. So there's that kind of like transition as to whether people are still getting postals or whether they get in-person orders. So there's gonna be lulls and then there's gonna be highs no matter kind of what business you're in. Um, but yeah, so you have to um, kind of like let it grow naturally, but also make sure that you're doing everything right in terms of like captions, titles, um, everything like that, pictures, videos, because there's like a SEO like algorithm to Etsy. So if you're doing all those things right, then your stuff will get promoted more. Um, hi VRL, um, hi Holly, hi Jilly. Uh, do you do theme cakes often? I do not. Like, I literally never do theme cakes. I also don't do fondant, like, ever. Um, but this is someone that's ordered from me before, and her mum loves my cakes, so... Um, and we are kind of, we like, know each other. Uh, we went to a gym, like, PT together, me and this girl's mum. Um, but me and her are actually, like, the same age. So, yeah, um, that's why I thought I'd, like, make the exception. I don't typically, like, offer them out. But I thought it might be quite fun to try out a themed cake. So here we are. And it's all gone quite well so far. Like all of the fondant pieces that I've made look really good. So I'll show you them once this goes in the fridge. We're just scraping all the excess off. Um, for anyone new joining, it's Wizard of Oz, but it's mainly focused around the witch. Um, that's why it's green, and then we're going to be having a witch hat on top, and little red shoes, and various other witch-like accessories on it. So I'm just going to fill in any little specks.
So, rule smooth. So we're going to flatten the top and then we're going to start on the drip. So what I do is I'll put it in the fridge whilst we're melting the drip and then it can set a little bit, but it doesn't need very long. And because we're doing a drip, we don't have to worry about this bit in the middle um, because it's going to be covered. So what I do is I just smooth the sides in there and then we're going to cover the middle anyway. Um, oh my god, I love Wizard of Oz. It's my childhood favourite film. As soon as I saw the title, I had to click. Oh, I'm so glad. I um, I watched it as a kid, but I haven't watched it for like years. Um, it's definitely, I'm not really like into kind of older films, but after making the cake, I kind of want to go back and watch it because it definitely does remind me of my childhood. Um, so, just flatten this out so as you can see there's a little gap in the middle which we will cover but apart from that it is all smooth um what size is your scraper and knife i can only seem to find the smaller ones so this is the finch bakery scraper excuse it's a little bit dirty now um so there we go um and this is the bubble scraper i've got about four of these um so yeah, I've got the bubble, I've got the um, wave, I've got the medium scraper, which is the stripe one. So, but you don't need to get the straight one. Um, I see a lot of people that buy just the straight one, but obviously this has a straight edge and it also has a patterned edge. So I would say that you don't need to bother buying a straight only because then it's just going to have two straight sides. Um, it's definitely easy enough to hold this to use the straight side. So I would save yourself some money and get one of the patterned ones and then it means that you get the best of both. So this is the scraper that I'm using. They're about £12 on Finch Bakery. And then I'm also using their palette knife. I've got hundreds of these, like very, oh God, I'm like almost dropping stuff. Um, I've got various different ones of these. So this is a flat one. I've got angled ones of like non-branded. However, this one is very long. I think I got the 10 inch. So as you can see, it's much longer. So I just prefer it for cakes. So I use the others when I'm like doing basic stuff with palette knives, but whenever I'm icing cakes, I always use this. So yeah, it's the 10 inch and it's also Finch Bakery. And yeah, it's just a stainless steel palette knife, but it's an angled one like so. Um, but yeah, it's the 10 inch um, because the others I think are a little bit too small for cakes personally. Uh, what size? Uh, no, I've done that. Um, if you were selling eight brownies on Etsy, how much would you personally charge? There's such a price range. Um, I would say that it would need to be at least £2.50 each. Um, I charge what I charge in person, but then I add the Etsy fees on, which is usually about a pound. Um, but it just depends. But I see lots of people that are selling trays on there, like the same as me, and they're selling them for like eight pounds. And if you worked out your cost, you wouldn't make any profit. Um, and that's not to sound harsh, but like you need to make sure that you're paying yourself a good enough wage and you're taking into account all of your materials and everything like that. So just work out your costs because. Um, a lot of the time people are charging that's why there's such a range because people are charging so little um, and not like working out their costs but I would say my trays are £11 and my individual brownies because they're slightly bigger um, but they aren't that much more expensive because they don't have the tray and the tray costs money so um, they're 11 for the trays and then it's 12 for four individual brownies and postage is on top of that um, postage is £4.80 um, and I find that that works perfectly fine. You might get more sales if you're really cheap um, but obviously you will work yourself into the ground um, because you're going to be making a lot of items for very little profit. Um, thank you, I'll have a look after you finish. Is this cake for a child's birthday? No, it's not. It's um, I think it's a... I don't know how old she is because I don't think it's a big birthday um, but I feel I don't want to get her age wrong but I th I think it's 30s 40s I'm just gonna say that because I'm not sure um, but yeah it's around that but yeah it's um, one of her favorite films so that's why we're doing it I'm gonna put this in the fridge so that it can firm up a little bit whilst we weigh out all the chocolate for the drip 
and actually we need to cover the board because I need to do the upside down method to um, put this on the board before I do the drip. So we're going to put this in the fridge. Right, so I'm going to start making the covered board whilst we're answering questions. Um, what's your favourite thing to bake? I'm going to say cakes. Um, even it used to be brownies and I probably always say brownies and that's because they are quick and easy but in terms of like the amount of effort you put in to get something out I feel like cakes are really nice because you get such a good reward at the end because you get to see a lovely cake whereas brownies they might take half the time but they're just kind of like brownies whereas cakes I do love the way that they look at the end um, it always makes me like happy to see how they turn out um, what sort of filling ideas do you recommend we can use between cake layers? Um, one second, let me get my gloves. And my fondant and I'll be back. Right, got my stuff. Um, this ready to roll icing is just from Aldi. Um, I have never personally found a difference unless you're modeling that's slightly different but if you're just covering cake boards I would just use any ready to roll icing and then you just cover it on the board and it dries and like sets hard and then it's perfectly fine um, so yeah any brand before anyone like asks literally just any brand of icing whichever one you want to use um, so filling ideas let me have a thing so I'm just going to run through the cake flavors that I do because that's like that will give you an idea. So, I use I have Victoria sponge, which is um, vanilla sponge, vanilla buttercream, and jam, and that's strawberry jam. Then you have white chocolate and raspberry, which is white chocolate, buttercream, a plain sponge, and then raspberry jam. So again, another jam. Then there's um, chocolate and Nutella, which is a double chocolate. Um, sponge and buttercream and then the buttercream is um, made with Nutella so then it's Nutella flavoured um, so yeah you can have spreads then you can also do Biscoff which is the same you have a Biscoff sponge and then you make the buttercream so then again it's like a spread that you can use in it so there's various spreads that you can use in cakes um, what else I have lemon as well. Um, I don't use lemon curd just because it probably sounds silly and I always say this, but I don't sell anything that I don't like just because it's very difficult. Like I wanna make sure that I can taste something to test whether it tastes good and I don't like lemon curd, so I don't use it because I can't test it to know whether it tastes good. Um, so yeah, whenever I do lemon cake, I just do buttercream and what else? I do um, lemon sponge. I don't add, add any like lemon curd or anything like that just because I don't like it. Um, so yeah, jams, spreads, um, chocolate related um, buttercreams rather than just like plain buttercream. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. You can use curd, like lemon curd if you wanted to. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else at the minute. Um, what piping bags and tips do you use, brackets brand? So piping tips is always Wilton, um, like so. You can see it engraved on the side or like you can kind of see it. Um, so yeah, I use Wilton. I use the 8B, the 2D and the 1M. Um, and then piping bags, I just use some that I got off Amazon. Um, I do have a few reusable ones, but I don't really use them. So these blue ones, which are industrial ones, which are just massive. They're literally like this big and then you just cut them down to whatever you want. Um, they are, I think they're like $7.99 and I got 100 and they're really tough as well because my old piping bags, they'd be probably like half the price, but sometimes you'd be piping and it would literally explode. And it happened once and it was really, really bad all over my cake and I had to like scrape all the icing off and do it again. And after that happened, I was like, right, I need to get some really strong piping bags because I can't have this happening again. Um, so yeah, and then I got those off Amazon and they're great. If you just type in blue, like um, piping bags, they'll probably come up. But if you try something like commercial, anything like that. Um, yeah, because at the moment they're 460 for eight. 
They're £4.60 for eight and I want to include shipping too. With minimum wage it's about £16.99. I might need to work under minimum wage to get it going. Yeah, so brownies are typically um, a lower minimum wage, like a lower wage in general. However, you can usually make more at the same time, so then it means you might be getting paid £10 an hour because you're making multiple brownies. Um, whereas if you're working it out by tray and you only make one tray an hour, then obviously your wage is going to be lower. Um, but yeah, you obviously hope that with postals you'll be doing multiple and then it makes it more worthwhile my boxes of eight are um my boxes of four or twelve so my boxes of eight i think are 20 pounds um with shipping on top and people happily pay it so um yeah i do like big trays of eight and they're just not cut um and then people can choose four toppings and yeah i charge i think it's 21 pounds um and yeah, people pay, so I would definitely say work out your costs and charge what you would like to. You can always put your prices down, um, but you don't want to put them up. Like, if you, it's the same with anything. Like, you can have inflation, so like, um, I will be paying or I'll be registering for tax this year because um, it's my first year, so that will mean that from this year I'm going to inflate my prices because I'm now paying tax and like every year bakers will inflate their prices because when they pay their tax and it's just like a yearly inflation most businesses do it um so i'm going to be doing that as well and that's obviously me putting up my prices but if you were to put your prices up just randomly then people are going to get a bit confused so that's why you want to start higher and then if you put your prices down because you think right i'm not attracting any buyers or i don't think um this is like a good price for it then it means that you can put it down it's always better to put it down than put it up um, especially if people start buying because you don't want people to start buying and then they're getting it cheaper and then you put it up um, da, 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 da. Uh, I like the tornado scene in the Wizard of Oz I haven't watched it um, for so long I can't remember I'm doing the witch so it's a green cake and then it's got a witch hat and it's also got the got witch legs it's got lips um and it's got a black drip um so yeah it's witch themed is it easy to start a baking business no definitely not um it is very underestimated um there is a lot of work and it depends what you want it to turn into i want mine to turn into kind of like a i have the idea of like a franchise not like a franchise where it's got lots of um like venues more so where you've got lots of things going on so like i have my youtube i want to do tutorials um i'm working on a cake guide i have merch like i want all these different avenues for the business but if you're just planning that you want to work from home making cakes and you don't want to expand it any more than that then it might be easier for you um whereas i'm trying to like constantly expand it um to bring out different avenues that will then make more income and then the overall business will be able to grow um but yeah it really just depends where you want your business to go um and like whether you plan to have employees in the future anything like that so yeah it really just depends but um i think there is a lot of work that goes into it and a lot of research i mean like one of my channel is one of the only ones that um, actually kind of helps people out a little bit because there are so many people that don't want to give away their information that they've like learned over the years which is completely fine because it does take a lot of time um, but that's just me kind of explaining to you that it does take a lot of time to find packaging to find recipes um, yeah it just takes a lot of time and money but um, if you really want to do it then it will be worth it um, what do you have what do you have to go on the cake to make it Wizard of Oz themed? Um, so I'm not sure if you if I heard, said it when you were here, um, but it's the witch hat, the lips, and then um, two legs like coming out the side of the cake. It's based on a photo that I was shown, so that's what I'm working towards. 
Thanks for your feedback. Just intimidated by the popular Etsy brownies being £10 and thinking how they're doing it because they're popular. Um, well, that's the thing. They will be popular because they're cheap. Um, but the person will be losing money in the long run. Um, yeah, that's basically the kind of short answer of it. Um, they might be making... Or, and the thing is, they might not even be losing that much money, but they're going to be doing, you know... 10 hour days making brownies and then you won't get a 10 hour day wage for it so um yeah that's the only thing but yeah obviously it's each to their own um if it works for them then that's completely fine i mean i've seen quite a few etsy sellers like stop selling because they weren't making enough money um but yeah i think it's better to be like a slow burner and build up gradually and have all your pricing costing and everything like that right rather than get loads of attention for being cheap and then as soon as you up your prices to a reasonable wage um, the sales go down um, just starting my business and I'm a bit confused about tracking orders if you've got postal orders from Etsy a website and Instagram how do you track and make everything um, so I have an order log um, which is the one that I sell in my spreadsheet pack um, on my Etsy and my website, um, which will be linked below if you're curious. Um, and I have a order log which I update um, and it has all my in-person orders. Then I have a separate one for Etsy. Etsy has a tracking system and so does the website. The only reason I have an order log um, as well as because I also have an order book like so. Um, I have two forms i have a paper form and then i have my spreadsheet form just so that if i lost that book then i have my orders and also like if i got locked out of etsy because of password issues or anything like that then i can still see all my orders because they'll be in this spreadsheet um so yeah it's good to have a second log and it's just you know i'm a worrier some people you know it might never happen but um I just like to be prepared in case it does go missing or I lose it and then um, I need to see all my orders. Um, I went for a job interview today for a cakery, fingers crossed I get the job. Oh, that's so cool. Well done, hopefully, fingers crossed you get it. And um, that would be amazing. I saw um, Bakerholics is recruiting for anyone that knows who Bakerholics is. She's a... I don't know whether she's still a teenager. I think she's 19, so she is a teenager, but she might be 20 now. Um, but she has her own shop and she's recruiting, but she's like one of my main inspos, I love her. Um, completely agree and also thank you for this channel because your videos have been really helpful. Thank you. I'm trying to make this blacker. Um, what I might do is I might paint it because I don't want to use all my colour mill because colour mill is so expensive. Um, but I do really like this black. Um, how do you know if you'll get an order ready and delivered on time? Um, you just plan, I guess. So obviously you need to know how long it's going to take you to make something. So like this orders for tomorrow morning. I know that the cake is already iced. The, the icing of the cake takes me about 15 minutes. I know that a drip takes me like five, 10 minutes. Um, I work out how long it takes me to do fondant details and then you just plan your day. I bake all cakes the day before. I don't feel the need to do them any sooner, any um, yeah, earlier than that. Just because I have the time and I'm like quick enough to do it on the day. Um, yeah, because I, I didn't start this cake until 3pm. That's when I started baking it. And then obviously I've had breaks in between because I saved it for the live. I didn't like do anything else with it. So, um, yeah, I think you just have to plan your day um, around what orders you have. Um, right, I think I'm going to roll this out, see what the colouring is like. It's a little bit grey, but I'm thinking that I can paint it, which would be a lot easier. I'm going to get a bit of greaseproof paper. Like so. I just ripped this off a roll for anyone wondering. I have a roll in my drawer. Doesn't have to be perfect, so you just roll it out. 
Um, <clears throat> that's smart. I've seen some people opening orders a few days a week. Just curious about it. Um, opening orders a few days a week. Do you mean um, like having set days? Because I have set days on Etsy um, and on the website. So I pick two days a week that I want to post on. Um, it's usually based on how busy I am. So I know that I have some free time on a Sunday and also on a Tuesday, Wednesday. So my postal days is Monday and Thursday because I know that I can have the orders ready. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. I have set days. I don't close the shop or anything because I see people that close the shop. But I've had people where I've ordered from other bakers and they close their shop and they do it because they're sold out. Um, but the only issue is people can't look at the items. So it means if someone does find your Etsy, they're going to click off because it's a closed shop. So they're not going to be able to actually um, look at the listing, look at the prices. You can't see anything, um, flavours, nothing. So um, yeah, that's why I have it always as an open shop. And then I just change the date in the listing as to when it's going to be posted. Um, could you explain listing ingredient percentages on food packaging? So this is, I believe it's Natasha's law. This is a pre-packed item requirement. It will be, I believe, I need to do my research because it's not in effect yet. Um, but I think it's in October this year. It will be a compulsory thing um, where whether it's pre-packed or not, you still have to include it. But as far as I'm aware at the moment, it's not compulsory. So basically, you list the percentages in the value of um, descending. So it means that um, whichever has the highest percentage, so like if there's the most butter in the recipe or the most flour, then it will go in order of what it, there is the most of. So there's that. Um, and it's basically because if someone, someone can be allergic to nuts, but they can eat, um, say 5% of nuts, but then if you have 20% of nuts, then they're going to have an allergic reaction. So some people are allergic to percentages of an ingredient, which is most of the time why I don't cater for allergens. I only do it if I know the person or they've ordered from me before, then I will cater for it. But I don't usually work with allergens because they are so complicated but that's what that is um so yeah that's for pre-packed and pre-packed is if it is packaged before it's sold so imagine it like you go into tesco's you're buying that after it's already been packaged however i make all of my stuff to order which means that it isn't classed as pre-packaged so i give a full ingredients list and the only reason I do this is because a lot of my stuff is given as gifts. And I actually had one recently where um, they were dairy free as well as gluten free. And two of the items had dairy in and then one of them didn't. Um, so then they knew what they could eat, but they didn't order it for themselves. So um, yeah, that's why I like to give a full, um, what do you call it, ingredients list. Because so many people give it as gifts. And also, there was another person, um, this is just kind of like a general comment, and people might know what I'm on about, because you will get customers like this, but if people order in for friends, they might say, like I had someone who said um, they eat Kinder Bueno all the time, but they're allergic to nuts, and I said, well, Kinder Bueno has hazelnuts in it, so I can't give it no matter what, um, because it might be that my batch of Kinder Bueno has a larger amount of hazelnuts which gives them a reaction um as a bakery i can't risk it whereas they can risk it um as an individual so yeah that's why i give a full ingredients list because like they said they eat it all the time um so they sort of weren't taking it as seriously um if that makes sense whereas if the person was ordering they might have been a bit more strict on what they wanted in their um bake so yeah, it just depends how seriously the friend or whoever's buying it for someone takes their allergy. So that's why I like to give a full list because I just worry that if someone um, orders on behalf of someone and they don't give the correct information to me, then they might have an allergic reaction. Um, 
if you leave it to sit for a bit the color will darken yes that's what i was thinking um and then i thought i can paint any like imperfections um do you have a good vanilla buttercream recipe on your channel unfortunately i don't share any of my recipes just in videos i will be doing a cake guide um which will be a full um guide on how to stack a four inch cake fridge time everything you need in terms of like um utensils bowls all of that stuff and then it will also go into a buttercream recipe and a sponge recipe and yeah it will be a full like start to finish on how to make it so i'm planning to release that soon i'm just writing it up and i'm in the process of like producing it all um but yeah that will be coming soon so that will be a recipe but apart from that i don't share any recipes um could you do a video about keeping your accounts i definitely will because obviously the tax year is ending um well it has ended um because it's april so yeah i will be doing a video on how i keep my accounts i'll also be doing a video on tax and submit your tax return and all of that jazz um so i'm planning to do some videos on keeping your accounts for tax and um how to submit a tax return all of the information that you need to know so that will also be coming out very soon um thank you so much that's exactly what i was curious about yes um so yeah that's everything to do with etsy um perfect amy keep up the good work thank you right this is almost the size that i need it to be um see and then what you do is you cut round your board and then you put your fondant on it so just trying to get it literally about an inch inch bigger each way is what I need a little air bubble which is really annoying me because it keeps coming back So what I do is I place the board on it, I cut a circle, flip it over um, after applying a little bit of water to here um, and once you've obviously gone round it and cut where you need to um, and then I roll it out again once I've flipped it over I roll it to make it a little bit thinner and then um, we cut off any excess. So. I have this little knife, um, I got this from Hobbycraft, it's a little like scalpel type thing, um, so I just use this to go around the edge. I'm going to put it on the turntable so that you can see. Right, so I'm going to add a little tiny bit of um, piping gel it's called and I add a tiny little bit of water as well so
get a paintbrush. These are like food ones that I bought. And then this is the little piping gel that I got. This is from the range. And I either use this or water, um, but I might only need this. So you just... Like so, you can kind of see it on there. And then we're just gonna flatten that out. Sorry guys, this takes a lot of concentration. <laughs> Trying to make sure I cover everything. Um, do you keep those extra fondant bits? I usually don't because they dry out um, and also once they're coloured, if you don't need that specific colour. If I buy pre-coloured fondant, then I do because it already comes in a packet so you can just wrap up the packet again. Um, but yeah, the offcuts I usually don't. Um, I either use them as scraps, so like if I'm feeling like making some cupcakes, then I use them, um, and then I just eat them myself. But yeah, most of the time they don't get used because they're either small pieces or they're a colour that I won't use in the near future. Um, right, so... That is on there, you can see it's all moved around to make it flat. So, I'm gonna place this back on here. And then, oh, I nearly, <laughs> nearly dropped that. Thank God, right. doesn't want to peel. There we go. It's because I didn't put the parchment paper underneath it. I need to move that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use our little scalpel and just go around the outside.
and then you're just trying to round off the edges there will be a ribbon likely around the bottom of the board um, so then that will cover any edges I need to stamp this um, but the message is on my phone which is a right pain but I think it can probably wait um, but yeah the message that I need to put on the board is on my phone so um, we can do that afterwards right so move this And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the other cake out, put it on here, and then we need a little mini board and flip it. Um, so, I'm not sure where I've put my little here we go so we've got our board I'm going to put a bit of parchment paper over that Just like so and then it means that when we're flipping it it's not touching the board it is so green I love it um, it is so luminous it is so cool um, right so the way you do it like so you can use, you don't have to use parchment paper, but part of the board, the silver bit, I'll just show you, part of the silver has ripped off where I use it for a cake dummy, so I'm just covering it, but it's my only like mini board. So, you just flip it. As long as it's been chrome coated for long enough, this will work. If you have not given it long enough, then it won't work. Um, so yeah, as you can see, you can see the base. It usually takes a little bit off, but it's a very shallow amount. So you just fill that in with buttercream on the new board. So I'm gonna move that over. So what you do is you add a bit of buttercream for it to stick. And then you get your board. I need to decide where I want it. I think I need quite a big message on the front, so I'm gonna need to put it towards the back. That's me deciding that that's the front. So, I think I want this to be the front. So you want to smush the buttercream down so it spreads out nice and evenly because that will be what sticks it. Then you just got to shimmy your board back off. Right, so like so. That was scary. There we go. So, oh, 
That always scares me, flipping it round, but you just have to go for it and try and be as quick as you can, because otherwise it might fall. Um, but the parchment paper was making it slip, which was really throwing me off, because I don't usually use parchment paper, but I don't have a, a small clean board, um, whereas that one had the tape off of it. Right, so this is going to have ribbon around the bottom, which hides the um, any like imperfections around the bottom, which is where when you do the upside down method, typically you will have little imperfections because you are completely taking it off of the board and flipping it. Um, but yeah, you can use a piping bag and you can do a very small hole, like I mean like chocolate drizzle hole and pipe a bit in there and then you smooth it out and nine times out of 10, no one will know. Mine is being covered by ribbon, so I don't need to worry. So just make sure that that is pushed right down. When it goes in the fridge, that buttercream that's on the bottom will set to the base of this board, which is fondant, so then it won't go anywhere. Right, so. We are using dark chocolate for our drip, so I'm just using cooking chocolate. So I'm going to break this up and put it in a jug, and then we will be doing the drip. So. Jug. Very wicked-like. Oh, I'm glad that it looks wicked. Because, um, yeah. I've been to see um, Wicked in the theatre. Um, this might... I haven't seen it for ages and I also haven't seen Wizard of Oz. They are different things. Um, but yeah, they're a similar vibe, I think, is what you're referring... Is what you mean. Um, yeah, I've seen both of them, but they have a similar, like, witch vibe to it. But So... I always make more chocolate than I need, um, so I'm doing 150 grams, it's probably way um, more than I need, but I find that it's really hard to measure how much chocolate you need for a drip because it varies so much. Um, I was biting my nails, oh, I think when I went to see it, I think I saw it like maybe four years ago. Um, I don't remember it being scary, but maybe I just wasn't really paying attention. I went with my mum and her friends, and I hadn't ever seen it before, so it might have just been that I had no idea what I was watching. Um, but I went to see it in the theatre. I don't know if that's, if it's only in theatres or not, but, um, yeah. Right, so, we have our dark chocolate, and we're going to be mixing it with a dash of oil. Um, and then we'll be mixing it with the colour mill to get it black. I always do this recipe, I either use chocolate spread, or I do chocolate with a dash of oil, whether it is milk chocolate, white chocolate, or dark. We're using dark because we want it to get to black, and that's just the easiest way to do it. I'm gonna go and shove this in the microwave. If anyone has any questions, put them down below now, and then I'll literally come back in about 30 seconds and answer them. Right, I'm just doing the first um, kind of like round on the microwave. For anyone that melts chocolate, I do it in 30 second bursts, so it's just gone off. So I give it a couple of seconds and then I'm gonna go and set it on another 30 seconds. I usually do between a minute and a minute and a half to melt my chocolate completely. And then I don't put it on when it's like still hot. I add the oil in and then I just keep mixing it and mixing it and then it gradually cools a little bit and then you can put it straight on the cake. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go and set it for another 30 seconds. So, 
I want to clear this area a bit because there's just so much stuff in front of me. So, um, the only fondant wise after this is paint the on the legs so it's got white like tights I guess so we will be painting black stripes I don't know if the signal's gone a little bit funny because on my other on my iPad I look a bit blurry so I'm sorry if the signal has gone a bit it might just be my wi-fi um right move this onto the back here to clear some of the space I think I want to put the ribbon on before I do the drip because then I know how low to go. So it's red ribbon. Um, how would you recommend getting more orders? I did a video on this, um, so if you, for more of a detailed answer, you can look at my how to get more customers. But the one thing that I always say to everyone, and if you've been a follower from the start, you'll know that I say this every single time someone asks, asks this question, but be unique, put lots of effort in, like do lots of practice recipes, practice designs, get lots of photos of your work, because that is one of the main things that is going to persuade people to order from you, is what your work looks like. Um, I'm a very visual person, so I like to take lots of photos of my work, post lots of photos, edit them all to like make collages of cakes that I've made, stuff like that. Like I do, usually at the end of um, a month, I've started doing like a collage of all my cakes because then people get to see a um, collage of all of your cakes in one place rather than having to see all the different photos of them. Um, but yeah, just being unique, posting a lot on social media because social media is the new um, kind of like way to get orders. Um, social media is a very popular thing at the moment and I feel like just in general, um, but yeah, I feel like you need to have a presence on social media in order to get more orders. That's just my personal opinion because it's a easy way for people to find you. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to concentrate putting this ribbon on. I'm going to need something to attach this. So. There we go. So as you can see, it's all tight. And then what I'm going to do is at the back here, where that opening is, I put a little bit of double-sided tape and stick it to the back. Um, so yeah, in regards to getting more orders, it's a very saturated market. So just try and make yourself as appealing as possible um, to new customers because there's so many people that are baking at the moment so um yeah you want to make yourself stand out as much as possible um where's your turntable from it looks really big and nice i bought one from lakeland but it's made of plastic um it is from amazon and it was 25 pounds i got it for christmas if you look at my if you can't find it there will be a link in there um or there'll be like a more of an explanation or a screenshot or anything like that. But my Christmas, like what I got for Christmas, I think it was, or my birthday, one of the two um, that I made a video on, you'll be able to find the turntable like link in that. However, if you type in stainless steel um, turntable on Amazon, you should be able to find it for around £25. Um, it's really good and it's also really smooth. Whereas I had a plastic one also from Amazon, which I got in a set and it would like rickety like it would like be bumpy when you're scraping which obviously is not good um so it was really difficult to work with but yeah i love this one right i'm gonna go and grab some double-sided tape just to fill in this bit at the back here and then we'll start on the drip because that is almost beeping at me to be done
Right. So I've got the chocolate, which just need to mix around. Um, and then this is a double sided tape that I use. I use this for my cake toppers as well. You do not need much. And all you do is peel it back and cut. It's gonna stick to my gloves, I just know it. Right, so. You pull back the bit of ribbon and you literally just stick that on there like so. And then you won't be able to see it, but the double sided tape is on the back of there. And then all you do is go like that. And then you can't even see it. You can just see that tiny little horizontal line where I've cut it. So yeah, and it looks like so. Right. So that is the board done, or like we need to do the stamping, but the actual main part of the board is done. Then we have our vegetable oil. The label is in the cupboard, it's just fallen off. It always falls off the um, oil containers. And then what we're gonna do is we take a little splash of oil and then we're gonna mix that in with our chocolate. So, do you still get a pension as you own your own business? I believe if you want a pension, you have to sign up with the government. So I think you go on Gov UK and then you um, will start paying into a pension. If you don't pay into a pension, then you won't get one. Um, that's not meant to like sound blunt. That's just the explanation basically. Um, so when you're with an employer, they automatically take a pension. You either opt in or out. Um, they did that when I was at the council. Um, so yeah, you basically have to opt yourself in because you're self-employed. Um, I'm starting my own business. I need some advice. If you have any specific questions, feel free to ask them because um, advice is quite general um, when it comes to businesses. There's just so many different like factors of a business. So it's much easier if you can be a little bit more specific. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask as many questions as you like. Um, right, so mixing the oil in you only need a little bit because dark chocolate tends to be um usually runnier than others so i'm not using an actual tablespoon this is a tablespoon but i'm not using a full one just putting a few drips in at a time So mix that all together and then we're adding our colour mill because this is oil based you can add it to chocolate and it won't seize and like with the oil you just add a little bit at a time until you get the desired colour. Almost. I love your lives. You're such. You're doing such an amazing job. Really, thank you. Oh, thank you, Julia. That's really sweet. Right, that is ever so slightly brown. So we need a teeny tiny bit more. There we go. Right, 
I think, I don't know, it's a very, very, very dark brown, um, but I can't decide whether to leave it as that or to um, keep adding. It's always the dilemma. Right, I think I'm gonna go with that and it will just be a, um, a very, very dark brown because when you're working with chocolate, you don't wanna to add too much coloring because it will make it thicker. So, scrape off any excess off of the spoon and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use our spoon and we're gonna drizzle bits of chocolate on and you just move it towards the edge of the cake and it will drip down. I need help on how to get customers I'm on Instagram by the way um, so like I was saying to Becky I'd recommend you watch my video because I actually did a video on how to get customers so I recommend you watch that for more detail um, but like I say getting customers you want to make yourself stand out so that you're different from all the bakers that are currently starting up because there are so many um, and you also want to put a lot of time and effort into photos trying out different recipes getting lots of photos of your work so that you can post it on social media um, and yeah that's pretty much all I kind of know that works um, there's so many things that come into it um, whether it's pricing or um, like the type of things that you make um, but those are the things that I found make a difference the more unique you are the more likely someone is to pick you over someone else I'm just filling any gaps that need another drip. Right, so the drip is done.
getting rid of any like excess on the top like if it's not needed then I don't have um where you because where I do the spoon method obviously you get lots on the top so yeah just get rid of any that doesn't need to be there so the hat is going to be going on the top so and the legs are going to come on the side so I think I might paint this. I have a little paint pen. What will you do with the rest of the dripping chocolate? Um, unfortunately, dripping chocolate can't be... Um, like reuse because it will just go hard um, and because it has oil in it I can't then remelt it like I would normal chocolate so if there is too much then it will go to waste unfortunately um, but obviously the um, yeah that's I don't really know what else I can use it for um, and again because it's got oil in it you can't use it for like cake pops or anything like that whereas melted chocolate on its own can be used for other uses um, right, I need my little palette, and then this is my black pen, so I'm going to see how much ink I have in here, I think that might be it, which is not right. So, here is the hat that I made to go on the top and there are the legs. I need to paint the um, black stripes on them. So, please bear with. Um, if you have any questions, ask them now and I will be painting the um, legs on these. I'm going to put them on the board, I think, first because I don't want... Um, to have to stick them on afterwards. I'm going to use a little bit of the chocolate just to stick it to the board. Um, where is my paintbrush? So yeah, what I'm going to do, I need to stick this on as well. So I'm going to use the leftovers of this dripping chocolate because one, this will go hard once it sets. So if I use this to stick this to the cake, then it means it will set against the cake afterwards. Right. So. I'm not sure, the legs in the photo were to one side, but I felt like it looked a bit weird. Um, so I'm not sure whether to not put them to one side. I'm going to put the hat on the top just because um, I want to stick it down. So...
I use cooking chocolate for the drip. It will go hard, um, not like rock solid, but it will, will it will um, like set. Um, so once it sets, it won't be as glossy, but I think that's partially because of the oil that I add into it. Um, so I need to put a message on this board. Um, so I think I'm gonna have the legs, I don't know. See, in the photo, they were like that. And I think they look weird off to one side. So I either have them off to this side to match the lips. And then stamp the board here. The shoes are quite cute, they're quite funny, um, they look so funny. Um, hello Zoe, we are making a Wizard of Oz cake, if anyone is wondering. Um, I can't decide, can't decide whether to have them in the middle or not. What do we think? middle or to one side i think that's probably the best side because it's got more room than this side and then i can have the message on this part of the board right so we're going to use some of this to stick it down How do you pack your big cakes? Um, do you mean like the boxes? I can do a little tutorial like I did at the end of my last video, at the end of my last live, um, where I show you how I pack them. Ah, okay, that makes sense. I wasn't, I haven't um, watched the movie in ages. So I didn't realise there was a specific like to the side or in the middle. But I I was more kind of like not sure whether to put it on the same side as the lips. But the photo that I got sent, the lips were to one side and then so were the legs. So that's why I've stuck with the photo because I think that's probably um, easiest. So I'm just putting a little bit more of this chocolate and oil to stick the shoes down. And then, I can't remember which one's which. Which one's left and which one's right. Not that they're very different, but. Um, So, the little legs are there. Um, I'm just gonna paint the stripes on. I wanted to do it once I had actually already moved them because I think that's the best way to do it. Um, so.
I'm making a cherry bake oil drip cake tomorrow. I want to do red and white buttercream on the outside, but I'm unsure what to do. Do you have any ideas? Do you think ombre would work? Yeah, I completely think ombre would work. I love doing ombre. Um, so if you, one of my other lives, um, which was a blue and white ombre cake, you'll be able to find it. Um, you can kind of like skip to the bit you need to, but in that video I show you how to do the ombre and you basically just splotch the mixture of colours in dots all over it and then you just smooth it out and it makes ombre. It's so easy and it looks really, really nice, so I'd definitely recommend it. Um, would you freeze uncooked cake batter? I don't think you can. Um, that's just an assumption. You might be able to, I've never tried. I know people freeze cooked cake, um, but I don't. I usually make it all fresh just because I find it easier. Um, um, what are the pros and cons of starting a business? Um, so the pros is you make your own hours and you're all your own boss, which is always nice. However, when you're running a business on your own, typically you're going to be working a lot more hours than you would a normal job or, you know, like an office job or anything like that. So you definitely need to be prepared to put lots of hours in because it's definitely not easy, um, especially if you want it to be successful. Um, and, and kind of like grow into something bigger then it's going to take a lot of like ideas and effort but it's definitely worth it um and the cons like i say is probably the long hours um and i don't i don't really know what else um i mean i enjoy it so i don't really have any cons that i can think of off the top of my head apart from long hours and it's not that sociable um whereas obviously when you work in a business or like in an organization it's more social um but yeah it just depends but i don't think there's many cons to it there's a lot of pros i think and i quite like being creative so it gives me that outlet for being creative sorry i'm just concentrating on these stripes because they are really difficult um I'm about to register my business but I'm really scared because I've got a cat in a really small flat. Do you think it's going to be alright? I, I don't think that they um, like discriminate or anything based on like the size of your house or like your pets. They might just recommend or maybe I would recommend that if you have cats then it would be a good idea to lock them out um, whenever you're baking or if you have anything cooling on the side but I feel like that's pretty, pretty like self-explanatory. Um, I probably don't need to sort of tell you that but um because like my dogs are locked out currently but they might come in and out for the toilet because this store is the only way out um but because they are dogs and they don't molt because of the breeds that they are i'm comfortable with them occasionally coming in the kitchen and not having to worry that their hair would get anywhere or like they wouldn't be able to get on the sides because cats might be able to get on the worktops depending if they're trained but um whereas dogs can't um because i remember when i used to have cats they would always be on the worktops um this was years and years ago but um yeah now we don't have cats we have dogs i'm using a tiny bit of my color mill because i've run out of my paint because i'm using this like paint pen but i've run out so i'm using a little bit of my color mill I clean the whole kitchen, living room, open kitchen before and after I bake. Yeah, that sounds right. I do the same. I can't see that there'll be any issue. I know of other people that have cats and they run businesses. Um, yeah, you just might have to take precautions to make sure that um, the kitchen is like kind of sectioned off whenever you're baking.
Right, they are almost perfect. Um, I can't write properly today. <laughs> I'm terrible. I am always making like typos. I have to check my um, my customer messages about 20 times because um, I'm terrible for writing the wrong thing because I my mind thinks about a thousand miles an hour. A little bit more. Right. So I need to print this board and I'm hoping that it hasn't set because um I need to stamp it. Um so I don't know if I can go off of the live. Does anyone know if I can go off the live and come back on? Because I need to check my messages. Unless I can go on to it on my iPad. Let's see. I'm just trying to log into my iPad so I can see what message I need to write down. Am I going to get the code? Sorry guys, I was just getting a security code to get into my account. Right. Perfect. Um... Sorry, just replying to a message. Right. We're going, it's actually kind of themed, the message around the um, cake. It's happy birthday, you old witch. <laughs> so um, we're going to be printing that onto the board. So the cake is um, done. Um, I might paint the hat. I haven't decided yet to make it a little bit more vivid. Um, but I haven't decided yet, so we'll see. Um, but I am going to use my little stamper and we're going to be doing this message. I'm going to write this message on paper so that I can go back onto the chat and see what everyone is saying because I'm currently not on it, so that's why I'm not replying. Um, let me just write this down. Happy. Perfect. Right. Back on to the chat. Right. Does colour splash red food colouring go deeper in buttercream? Um, I used the colour splash strawberry for this and it's gone quite red. Um, but it does depend. Sometimes it's not very dark and sometimes it is. Um, I would say that red needs to develop overnight, so you need to make sure you're giving it enough time to develop. Um, yeah, red is like the bane of my life, and so is um, black buttercream, just because it can be so hit and miss sometimes. Um, but yeah, I think just give it enough time to develop, and I would say that the colour splash is typically what I see people using, and I use it, and... If you give it enough time, it does work. Um, but yeah, it just takes a little while. So I'd make it the night before. Um, trying to get my spelling right. 
that's why I'm concentrating so much to um, do these stamps. Um, I need that. I'm putting letters away that I need. Right. Right, we've got old. Now I need another P. Um, when will the next Ice Age be? No idea. Um, I haven't watched that for years. Are you selling this cake? Yeah, it's in order. So um, all of my cakes are pre-orders. So they order it for a certain date and then I make it the night before. So she actually just messaged me. She's collecting at 11. So it will be done this evening and boxed up. And then um, it means that I get a little bit of a lay-in tomorrow. And I will definitely get a lay-in on Sunday, which will be nice. Um, Sunday is my day off. Not always, but this week it is. So... Um, yeah, I'll be getting a lay-in on Sunday. So she's going to collect this tomorrow, and that's literally the only thing that I'm doing. Um, and then in the afternoon, I am doing my photo shoot for my merch. So my merch is meant to be coming out, fingers crossed, um, Sunday. I can't guarantee because my, my brother is doing an amazing job, and he's editing the photos for me. Um, so, because he's he does like social media marketing and that kind of thing but he wants to get more into photography so um he offered to do the photos for me which is amazing um so yeah he's going to be taking photos of me wearing the merch so you'll get photos of me wearing it and then there will also be like product photos where it's just the like t-shirt and hoodies and stuff so um i can't find h which is really annoying me um so yeah, you will see the merch very, very soon. So we're doing that on Saturday night, so it just depends how long it takes him to um, get them ready, but obviously I don't want to rush him because he's um, being very generous in offering to do it. Um, I am planning to get him a little gift, but I'm not sure what I'm going to get yet um, as like a thank you, so um, we will see. But yeah, so I'm hoping that maybe like I might have the photos by like Sunday, Monday, that kind of thing, and then I... All the listings are done on the website, they're just not live yet. So that means that I can um, make all the listings live once I just have the final photos. Um, can't wait to see the merch. Yes, I'm very, very excited. I did a sneak peek on my reels on um, my Instagram. So if you're wanting to see what one of the items looks like, then go and check that out. Um, because on my Instagram, I put a little sneak peek, um, which is Sweet Things by Amy, and that's it on Instagram. Um, do, 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 do. I need a Y. God, why is this so hard? I'm really struggling to find all these um, letters to spell this out. Um, let me answer these questions. Do you crumb coat your cake before decorating? Yes. So if you scroll back to the beginning of this video, you'll be able to see that it had a brown coat on it. That is my crumb coat. I crumb coat all my cakes because otherwise I don't think that they would be sturdy enough because um yeah the crumb coat is that layer that glues it all together and then that allows you to put this on and not have to worry because it will just glue it all together um is it normal for buttercream to contain lots of icing sugar for example one block of butter to 300 grams icing sugar it depends how big that block is but mine is typically um roughly 250 grams worth of butter um to 400 icing sugar so it's usually double um that's completely normal um happy birthday um you old witch right and then we need love Right, finally, got all my letters, so, right, we're going to use our stamper, and happy birthday, so I'm going to put that all on one, I think, 
and this is reverse so um, when you're loading these little um, stampers you need to do it in reverse because when it stamps it will be the opposite way around um, my name uh, my friend Nick has a birthday in two weeks what would be a good starter cake um, I would say to be fair I feel like drip cakes aren't um, too difficult um, if you want a drip cake but you could just do a plain buttercream cake and then you can have frosting on the top um, and then you can have chocolates all dotted around on the top just on a plain board um, or you can cover the board in buttercream um, but yeah I would say something like that because it's um, nice and simple um, right happy birthday um, yeah, so I would say maybe without a drip, just in case the drip goes wrong. Sometimes people take a little while to perfect the drip. Um, so yeah, I would say buttercream, and you can do it in any colour. The ombre is actually very simple, um, the ombre cakes, but they look quite advanced, but they're very easy to do. So again, feel free to watch my video that I did on how to do an ombre cake. Um, because you just dot it around you dot the mixture of colors and then when you smooth it it's all blended into ombre so it looks quite advanced but it's really not um so yeah that might be something that is like simple but effective right We move the the leg. I squish the leg. Oh damn! The legs were so perfect. I just squished him. How much are you charging for this cake? Um, how much am I charging? I think. Let me double check. Um, it's fifty for this cake, so it's a four inch, and my drip cakes. Um, I charge ten pounds extra per um, two inches. So, for example, my four inch cakes start from forty. Um, these are drip cakes. Um, and then normal cakes start from 35 and then 6 inch is um, 45 for normal starting and then 50 for drip and then um, 8 inch is 60 for drip and 55 starting so um, yeah which is because it's got £10 worth of fondant details and like the covered board is all extra work so um, that's what I factor into that cost is that it take I add an extra hour on for that work even though it does take slightly longer than an hour um, to do it all probably um, but yeah I add the extra 10 which is eight pounds an hour actual wage um, for the fondant and then I charge two pounds for the actual pack of fondant and all the coloring and everything that cost um, so yeah, and I don't charge high per hour for my fondant just because I'm not advanced. I don't do fondant every day. I do buttercream. So that's why I don't add crazy amounts. Some people charge £15 an hour. Um, but if it's something that I'm very, very good at, then I'll charge that. But if it's something that I don't specialise in, like fondant, then I charge a lesser hourly rate. Um, sorry, I am moving around these letters again so we're gonna have a little bit of downtime because i'm trying to figure out which ones i'm missing right there we go so 
Um, is there fondant on the cake board? Yes, this black down here is um, fondant and that's what I'm stamping into. Happy birthday, you old. That's what I need now. Um, have you done a pricing video? Yes, if you go back um, into the baking business um, playlist and probably if you saw it from most viewed the pricing video is one of my higher viewed ones so um, yeah if you filter it by that then you should be able to find it pretty quickly but that was how to price your cakes and like small treats anything like that so I went through it in detail in that video. Where are my scissors? Um, hi, I commented on your last video. Hello. I think, correct me if I pronounce it wrong, but I think you pronounce your name Sersha, is that right? So hello to Sersha, if that's right. Um, yes i i don't know when you commented on my video so if it was recently then i probably haven't seen it um but i will reply i'm hoping to go through comments this evening once i've done this because i should be done very very soon um so then i'll be able to do admin i'm just i just have to stamp this board and then um this cake is done right these little stampy things can be so like temperamental. Right, you, happy birthday, you old. I'm trying to make sure I'm actually, uh... Right, on to the next line. I think I'm going to paint these so that it stands out more. I haven't decided um, with the message on the board. Right, on to the last bit of the message. These bits are so fiddly because you have to take the letters on and off and on and off of the um, little railing. I will show you closer up once I've done it, um, just so that you can see it, but.
It looks like a small hole towards the back of the cake. I think it's a bit of black colouring, which I will clean off in a minute. I think that might be what you're seeing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try and clean that off in a minute and then I can cover it up with some green. Right. Last bit. Right, the last bit is going on. Is it that? Because that's another bit of black colouring. I think that might be what it is. That tiny little black mark. That bit is the black colouring, and then there's a little black mark there, which is another bit of black colouring, because I managed to splatter it onto the nice green. So, um, yeah, I'll cover that up in a minute. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these little, um, I don't know what it is at all, and I'm going to use it to make commas because I've got initials on here as to who it's from. So I'm just going to use this to make little commas in between each of the letters because I don't think a comma stamp exists. There we go. Lovely. I think I'm not going to paint the letters because I think that it might ruin it. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to leave them as they are because I don't want to ruin it. Because painting a board is very temperamental. If it goes wrong, I don't want to ruin it. Um, I just made pancake cakes. Uh, looks like a hole from my end. Yeah, I can't, I can't see. Like, I'm looking really closely and I can't see, apart from this black dot and that black line. So I think it's just the colouring, but it just looks like um, a hole. Um, I don't know whether I can... I'm just buffing it out. I know it looks bad now, um, but I'm just getting it to be lighter. And then it means that um, when I go over it, I don't have to apply as much. Right. So... Thank you. 
Would you either recommend just practice or taking classes for cake decorating? Um, I didn't take any classes and I was also not a very big like baker before I started the business. So I definitely don't think you need classes. Um, yeah, I would just say lots of practice will easily get you to where you want to be. Um, like I say, the same amount of time that you would put into a class, you could put into just like teaching yourself. And yeah, you'll get just as good of a result. Um, right, that's really annoying me now because <laughs> I've buffed it out and I should have just left it as a tiny little dot because now it's more noticeable. Um, I'm going to shove it in the fridge because I can't do anything with that whilst it's still soft. Um, and then what I might do is try and paint over it with um, some green. But it is on the side so you can't see it anyway which I'm glad about, but, um, yeah, it's just annoying me, I should have just left it, because it was like a little tiny dot, and then I started touching it, and now I've made them, they look worse on here, they're just kind of like shadows, but it's really annoying me now, um, because I know that it's there, right, we are going to put this in the fridge, so, as you can see, it's got the message on the board, the legs, and they're all painted, the lips, like so. So we're going to put it in the fridge. Right. If anyone has any questions, please put them down below because I'm going to work through them now whilst that's in the fridge. Um, I'm always late to your lives, but I want to tell you that I truly admire you. You're so professional. Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you. Um, this is very nice of you. I'm sorry that you're always late. Um, I try and do them later just because I think people prefer later lives. Um, so yeah, I try and do them later. This cake was ready to like be iced at like six, but um, I thought that I would wait. So that's why I waited until, I think it was like like half eight or something. I think I logged on, I can't remember. Um, I just know that it was later, but yeah, I think people prefer that. Um, I'm just having a little tidy up. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, your cakes are so amazing. Um, I commented on your last video. I will check comments after this video because I can't like check them whilst I'm on live. Um, I'm just putting away all of these stamps and then what I'm going to do is I'll give you a close up of the cake. So I'll just tidy up this area, answer some last minute questions and then I'll give you a full pan of the cake so that you can see what it looks like. two spare legs <laughs> because I made two extras just in case um, right I'm gonna have so much washing up to do after this any more questions guys it could be anything like business related cake related whatever you would like to ask Did you go to pastry school? I did not. Um, I didn't do any courses or anything like that. I'm completely self-taught. Um, I'd recommend like YouTube videos and just trial and error. Like a lot of the time you can try various different things out and then it will go wrong, it will go right and you'll kind of learn what's good and what's not. Um, so no, I did not go to school and I'm also not like trained or any classes or anything like that. Um, 
I came across your channel on your videos trying out Aldi's new vegan range. Oh, I love Aldi's vegan stuff. Asda though, Asda is my next favourite, like it's my top one now. Um, Asda's vegan and vegetarian stuff is so good, I could not recommend it enough. I love um, Asda. The Asda Superstore, if anyone, because I know people that are local to me actually watch these videos, so anyone that's based like in and around Milton Keynes, go to the Asda Superstore. It's a collaboration with Walmart and it is amazing. It is massive and it's got so much stuff in it. Um, it's also got lots of baking bits. My colour mill is leaking everywhere. Um, yeah, I love that Asda. Um, do you do the cleaning and temperature checks on days that you're not baking? Um, you only have to do that if you've got something in the fridge. Um, so yeah, if you have a cake in the fridge, so like tomorrow morning, I'm still going to have a cake in the fridge. So I'll do a temperature check in the morning and then note it down, but then I won't need to in the afternoon because I'm not actually baking. And then on days where you're not baking, you don't have to record temperatures. And also it's not, um, like obviously you want to be on top of it, but like, don't stress if you forget a day or anything like that because there's been the odd time where I forgot a day and I also didn't know that you had to do temperature checks until August last year um, and I started in June so from literally June to August I had no recordings at all um, but the health officer didn't mind because she said like obviously no one told you to do that but yeah if you forget a day don't worry about it but um, just try and remember to do it on days that you're baking mainly and if you have anything stored in the fridge i.e. a cake that is waiting in collection um, then record it that morning or afternoon or whenever as well um, so yeah um, right da, 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 da. right done with that also another thing um, if you do fondant or even if you do brownies these are really good these are from Dunelm you can also buy them on Amazon um, excuse how dry it is it's got fondant all over it but they're like really bendy chopping boards so they're really really useful and I think they were like five pounds but they're so useful um, what's one of your favorite cakes that you are most proud of that you did probably um, one of my recent ones, I did a pink and white drip cake. I did it on a live, so if you've been here a while, then you'll know what I'm on about. It was a 21st birthday cake, and it wasn't even that it was very complicated. I just absolutely loved how it came out. And also the ombre cake that I did on live, um, and the striped cake. Pretty much most of my drip cakes I'm really proud of, because I like the way that they turn out, and I think they look really good. Um, but yeah, every time I make a cake, I surprise myself. Like, even with this one, like, I, I never do fondant. So I was quite surprised how well this one turned out. Um, and also I've never done any of this stuff before, like all the little shoes, the legs, the lips, all of that stuff. Like I haven't practiced it, I just did it today. Um, and luckily it went well. So that's what I always say about like, just practice, like you don't even need to do classes because a lot of the time you can figure it out yourself. Um, but yeah, those are probably, like all of my drip cakes are probably my most favorite. My birthday cake though is gonna be insane. I'm doing a two or three tier, I haven't decided yet, um, but the only bit that is cake is going to be the bottom, um, and then the other one or two tiers will be dummies, so they'll be like polystyrene dummies, um, so yeah, they'll be fake cake, and I'm going to decorate them, and then it will be a three tier cake, or two tier, um, and I'm going to do different styles for each tier, so um, I was going to do one that's scalloped, one is going to have like painted flowers on it, and then another one I wanted to do maybe ombre, haven't decided yet. Scallop is like one of the scrapers instead of the bubble scraper, which is like that. It's scallop, so it like kind of cuts part of the cake out. Um, but yeah, my birthday cake is going to be amazing. I cannot wait for that. Um, my birthday is in August, but I'm already planning it right now because I'm hoping that we'll be out of COVID a little bit more and I'll be able to have more of a celebration than I did last year. Um, I'm going to put this stuff in the bin and then we're going to get the cake out and I'll show you it in a little more detail um i think i'm gonna leave the marks because i should have just left them as little dots i think but um i smudged them and they're kind of bigger marks but um i think it's better to just leave them it gets to the point where like 
if you, like I did, smudge it even more and try and fix it, then you're probably going to make it worse. So I think those little black marks I'm just going to leave because they're on the side of the cake, you can't see them. And yeah, I don't want to risk ruining it even more. <laughs> um, I will answer that question in a minute. I'm just going to take this stuff to the sink and my bowls here as well. Take all this. Just washed my hands. Right. Um. Do you cling film your cakes after baking and only put them in the fridge once crumb coated? When is it best to cut the dome? So the process is, for me anyway, I bake it, I leave it to stand in the tin for half an hour because they're so delicate that if you try and get it out of there you might rip the sponge. So I leave it in the tin for half an hour to firm up then I take it out of the tin, put it on a wire rack and then cool it until it is cool to touch, like not warm anymore basically. Um, and then I cut the tops off as soon as they're kind of cool, even if I'm not actually doing them yet. And then I crumb coat it as soon as it's cold. So I don't put it in the fridge and like leave it. I don't put it in the fridge when it's warm because it will condensate and then it makes the sponge um, kind of like wet. So I leave it out to cool under a little, I've got these little, like, if I can get one, I've got these. So they just kind of like spring out. I got them off eBay, but it just covers them from any like dust and anything like that. Um, so yeah, I cover them with one of these, let them cool in their tins. Then I crumb coat, goes in the fridge for however many hours. It can sometimes be overnight. Um, the crumb coat acts as a layer so your cake won't dry out because it's covered in buttercream so that acts as like a protective layer um, and then once they're all kind of like finished and done then I put them in a box and the box is only it's got a back on it like so so you use the lid and I stamp it to the back of the box and then I put cling film like from the top of the box to the main part and then that covers the cake the sides have slight little gaps but that's perfectly fine and then it means that any like condensation and like damp that's in the fridge because it's cold that all kind of glues to the cardboard and then it means that when you take your cake out the fridge you won't get that condensation um if you do get that condensation you want to put it back in the fridge but in a box and then the condensation will like stick to the box rather than to your cake um i hope that makes sense um ombre cake sounds really nice i'm new to the channel but i love watching you make drip cakes it's so satisfying i think a crystal cake would be cool so i've actually done both of those um on lives so i did a crystal cake that was my most recent live so if you go into my live videos you'll be able to see it um it's called a geode cake and it's where you cut out part of the cake and you fill it with um geode crystals so that's what i did and that was also an ombre cake and then i did another ombre one a few weeks before um so yeah if you want to go and watch those feel free um because they're live so they're similar to this right so i'm gonna get the cake out So, yeah, I'm going to leave those marks because I don't want to try and get them off. They're there. But when you have the cake front ways, you can't see it. So we're going to forget about them. Um, so I will turn you around and show you what the cake looks like. I think I'm going to leave the hat. Um, I did think about painting it. Um, I mean, I might, I might do it off camera. Um, I haven't decided yet, um, but obviously you've seen how the cake is made, so I can leave that out. But yeah, um, I can't decide whether to paint the hat to make it like a darker black. We'll see. Um, 
<laughs> I sent your channel to my mum and now she's as obsessed with your videos as me. That's so sweet. Thank you, Ash. That's so, that's so cute. Um, my mum watches all my lives, so she might actually be here, but um, yeah, my mum watches all my lives. So she's actually sat in the other room, but she watches them all. Um, but yeah, it's very therapeutic to watch, I feel like. That's why I love the lives, because every time I do a cake, I'm always on live. So um, yeah, I love it. Right, going to move this stuff out of the way so that we haven't got it in the background. And I can also cross off my list because I still have some stuff on there. I have a little whiteboard. Um, Jules Craft Room is my mum. So you can, um, um, yeah, yes, that's what I was thinking to scoop, to fix the black smudges, but it needs to be in the fridge for longer because, um, it's so soft now that, um, the black coloring wants to seep into the green. So I think what I'm going to do is put it in the fridge to set come back in like half an hour to an hour, scoop them out and then fill it because then they won't, the black colouring won't bleed because it's not like soft. Um, so yeah, no, that is definitely a good idea. Thank you. Um, I've got loads of green buttercream left as well. So I'm going to shove it in the fridge and then I can scoop these two bits out. That one's definitely worse, but it's just so annoying because it was a little splatter of black food colouring <laughs> and then I had to touch it and then obviously it smudges but um right and I've got it all over my glass as well right move all this out the way move my order book right I'm gonna turn you around um so that you can see a close-up my charging lead is on everything real close-up of my face right so Turn you around. So this is what it looks like. Um, yeah, so they themed it around the cake. Um, so yeah, we've got happy birthday, you old witch, and then love from and the initials of, I think it's the partner and the two kids, if I remember rightly. So we've got the ribbon around the bottom, the two smudges, <laughs> which I will fix. Um, and then we've got the two little legs and the shoes, which are just so cute. We've got the lips and the hat. So I'm actually very impressed. I'm going to put some black ribbon around the bottom here. Um, so that'll be the same method as I did with the red, where I use the double-sided tape, which is this. So I'll use a tiny bit of that. Um, and I'm just going to do it to hide the silver, um, just because it will blend the black in a bit better. So I will do that off camera. Um, and as you can see, the drip has hardened now, which is what happens when you use chocolate and oil. And then when it's kept at room temperature, it does soften, but it means that it goes hard enough that if someone was to poke it with their finger, it wouldn't smudge. Because like in transport, when it's in the car or when someone's carrying it, I find that if drips are too soft, then someone could easily touch it with their finger and completely smudge the cake. Whereas this, it completely softens at room temperature enough to cut and eat, but um, it stays nice and set, as you can see, and matte. So that... Um, you don't like mess it up if you 